Hey everybody, let's talk about types. So this is another C video for absolute beginners. And as I mentioned last time, I want to talk about the different types of variables that you can declare and use in your programs. This is a beginner video, so I'm not going to go into all the little nitty gritty details and nuances of the C type system. Instead, I'm going to focus on the types that you're likely to use in your everyday programs and particularly the programs that beginners are going to write. To simplify things, let's categorize our types into four categories. Numerical types, arrays, structures, and pointers. Now we saw a few basic numeric types last time. Specifically, we saw ints and floats. Today, I want to look at integer types a little more closely. Now these are your standard integer types. You have chars, which are usually one byte. You have shorts, which are usually two bytes. You have ints, which are usually four bytes. Longs are usually four bytes. And long longs are usually eight bytes. Now, when you have more bytes, it means you can store larger numbers. So for example, the biggest number you can store in a char is 255. Shorts can go up to a little over 65,000. Ints and longs can go up to a bit over 4 billion and so forth. And so you get the idea. And each of these different types can be signed or unsigned. Signed variables can have negative values, but they give up some range in order to accomplish it. So for example, an unsigned int can go from zero up to a little over 4 billion. A signed int can usually go from about negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion. So you can represent negative numbers, but you give up some range. And now you notice when I'm talking about these types, I've been using the word usually a lot. And that's because the C standard actually allows some wiggle room when it comes to numeric types, particularly these numeric types. And so like an int is usually four bytes, but on some microcontrollers, an int is two bytes. And this has actually caused me a fair amount of trouble in the past. I work a lot with microcontrollers. And so I prefer to use the fixed width integer types that are defined in standard int.h. I've talked about fixed width integers in other videos in the past, but the gist is you declare a fixed integer like this. So something like int 8 underscore t means I've got an integer that is 8 bits long, that's one byte. So you can also have something like a uint 64 underscore t, which is going to be 64 bits, and the u at the front means it's unsigned. Now the nice thing about these types is that they are always going to be the same width. A uint 64 underscore t is always going to be 64 bits. No matter what compiler you use, no matter what platform you're on, it's always going to be the same size. And you don't get the same guarantee with ints and shorts and longs. So that's what I like about these types. They make your code more portable and more predictable. Now the main limitation with integer types is that they can't represent fractional values. So you can't have anything on the right side of the decimal point. You can try to assign an int to the value of 3.4, but it's not going to work. An int can be 3 or it can be 4, but it can't be 3.4. And this is where floating point numbers come in. Types like float, double, and long double. These types represent real numbers, but they also use variable precision. Think about these variables like you would numbers written in scientific notation, where you have a limited number of digits that you can use to represent the number. You can represent really little numbers, or you can represent really big numbers, but the bigger your number gets, you still only have so many bits of precision, and so your precision actually goes down as the numbers get bigger. And so floats and doubles are similar. And by the way, double just means it's a double precision. It has twice as much precision as a float. But they both have variable precision. So for example, if you take a very large float and add a very small float to it, you should not be surprised if the result is very similar, if not the same, as the very large float that you started with because it just may not have the precision, it may not have the resolution to represent that small change you made. And you can see that here in this example. This is a reason why you wouldn't want to use floats or doubles to represent money in bank accounts or in other financial documents. And that's because people get a little nervous when a few cents or a few dollars here and there go missing. That's generally considered a bad thing in accounting. Also, I want to come back to char really quick. I mentioned it's a numeric value, but its name char is because it's often used to represent characters. So with a char, I can assign it a number, but I can also assign it a character. I can put single quotes around this, this character, and this is going to store the numerical value of that character in this variable. And this is going to be useful when I want to print out a character or multiple characters. And we'll talk more about text in a future video, but I just want to point that out, that that's what char is there for. And this brings us to our next category, arrays, because sometimes you don't just want one int or one char, maybe you want a whole bunch. And so we can declare arrays. For example, you can declare an array of 50 integers, call it x, just like this, use the square brackets to specify initially the size of the array, and then later on you can actually use the square bracket notation to select one of those ints. 
Now notice the first element is gonna be element zero, not element one. And the last element of this array is going to be element 49, not element 50. Now this might seem very strange to you. Why start with zero? Why not start with one and count up to 50? And there is a really good reason for this, but it would be a bit of a detour today. I don't know that I've got time, and so I'll address that in another video. For now, you just need to take my word for it. There's a good reason for it. Also, in just about any programming language that you study, you're going to be starting your arrays indexed with zero. There are very few exceptions and so it's probably a good idea to just get used to it. And don't worry, it's only gonna feel weird the first couple hundred times you do it. Next on our list is structures or struct. Structs are useful when you have a bunch of data that you wanna to keep together. Like let's say we're writing a program that wants to keep a bunch of information around about people. And so maybe I want to have a bunch of information about each person. So for example, I can define a struct for a person that has information I want to store about each person, like their name, their age, and their height. And it's gonna look something like this. And now once I've defined this struct, I can actually make more of them. I can make one for you, I can make one for me, and I can access a specific member of the person struct using the dot operator. So for example, me.age will be the age member of the me struct. And U dot height in inches is going to be the height in inches member of the U struct. So that's pretty straightforward. Now finally, let's talk about pointers. So pointers store memory addresses or locations in memory. And you create a pointer like this by adding an asterisk. So you could say int asterisk x, and that's going to say I'm declaring a pointer to an int and I'm gonna call it x. And so let me emphasize x here isn't an int. It's an address. And the compiler is gonna treat whatever is at that address, whatever it points to, as an int. So when you're starting out, you might think that this is something that won't come in very handy very often, but you'd be wrong. Pointers are useful all over the place, and you're gonna find as you program more and more in C that you use pointers all the time. And today we're not gonna go into all the different reasons that you can use pointers. Those will come in different videos. For now, I just want you to understand the basic idea of what a pointer is and how it works. So let's go through a simple example. So let's, let's say I have an integer, we'll call it y, and we'll assign it to seven. And I've got an int pointer p, and say I type something like this, okay? What I'm saying here is that I want p to store the location or address of y. The ampersand character means the address of, okay? So I can put that before any variable, and it will get the address in memory where that variable is stored. Okay, so now what happens if I print out p? Notice that I'm using percent %p instead of percent %i because it's a pointer, not an int. So I'm telling printf, I want you to print out a pointer not an integer. And you notice that it prints out a number that doesn't look at all like the value of y. It doesn't look anything like seven. And this is because it's the memory address. This is the memory address where the variable y is stored. And so if we want to print out the integer that p points to, then we add an asterisk in front of p. And this means give me the int that p points to. Now that looks familiar. And I can use my pointer to change the value of the variable y as well, just like this. So again, I can say asterisk p, or sometimes we say it star p equals 14. So this is saying, I want you to change the int that this points to, to this new value. And we're gonna look more at pointers in future videos, but that's all the time I have for today. So go write some code, practice what you have learned, help you it can, and I will see you soon in the next video.